Hi, it's Richard here from the Leather Repair Company, and what we're going to show you today is we're going to show you colour mixing. So we're going to make the paint to recolour this um, chair back. We've got some scratches here, as you can clearly see. The scratches are quite bad. You know, you can sort of see them all stuck up in the air here. So it's been clawed with a sharp object. And what we're going to do, we're going to show you how to repair these with no filler and no glue, just using the paints. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's see if we can get zoomed in there for you to show you those, to show you what that looks like. As you can clearly see, it's pretty chewed up. And that's exactly what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to do that um, using those four colours that you can see there. So, yep, that's going to be the next stage of what we're going to do. So let's uh, crack on and start to get the actual colour mixed up for you. So we've obviously got the four colours, which is the yellow oxide, <coughs> the white, the umber, and the red oxide. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove these from the chair here, because we don't want them to fall over. And we're going to get some white, first of all, into the pot. So let's get the white in the pot. So that's the first stage that we've got to go to, is to get the actual white in the product. And then we're going to get some yellow oxide. Excuse me. So we only want one drop, if we can, to begin with. One drop of yellow oxide. And I'm going to get one drop of umber as well, to begin with. So I'm going to get one drop of umber as well, to begin with. Like so. And I'm going to get a very small amount of the red oxide. And I'm going to put that on my actual stirrer, because I don't want a full drop. So we've got quite a fair bit on there. So let's just take some of that off. So if we just get a piece of tissue and we can take some of that off because this is going to turn it quite red. So we'll just remove some of that that's on the surface and then give it a stir up. And we're going to see roughly where we're at. Obviously I've chosen these four colours. It just comes with experience for colour mixing. So we're looking a little bit light at the moment, as you can clearly see. It's looking it's, you know, it's not bad. It's not quite yellow enough and it's a little bit light. So I'm going to add another drop of umber in and I'm probably going to add another drop of yellow oxide also. So I just want one drop of each product going in there. Again, we wanted to do this so that you can sort of see, you know, you can do this at home. It's no problem whatsoever. You know, creating, you know, doing a DIY project or repurposing something at home. And what we're going to do, we're going to test the colour on the actual leather. So it's not looking too bad. It's maybe a little bit yellow, so it maybe wants a little bit more muckiness to it, which would be the umber going in there. So I'm going to just place a little bit of the colour, you know, on the surface. And as you can see, it's definitely too light. So we're just going to wipe that around to blend that in. And then we're going to just dry that with the hairdryer. But I can see that it is definitely too light. Yeah, so that's too light, as you can clearly see there on the surface. You can still see that there where it's too light. What we can do, we can take that off. We're going to use a little bit of leather cleaner to do that in a moment. But let's get a little bit more umber in here to try to darken the colour up slightly a little bit further. And I want, I'm only doing one drop at a time. What you don't want to do when you're colour mixing is go putting in loads of a colour. Because you're going to end up with a lot of hard work to try to counteract that to bring that back down again. So you need to make sure that what you're doing, you're, you're going in the right direction without going too far by adding in far too much of a particular tint or colour into your mix. So let's just have another look at that to see where we're at. Let's try it beside it here. So again, wipe that in thoroughly with the tip of your finger. I 
and dry again. That's a pretty good mix. So we're very happy with the um, colour that we got there. So that's actually working quite well. So I'm very happy with that. So the next stage um, is we're going to show you how that we take off the colour that you can see here that's a bit light. So we're going to have to obviously take that off. So we need to take this colour off that's just here, look, and we're going to show you how to do that. So again, spray on some leather cleaner. Obviously the colour can easily come off at this stage because we've not, not applied it properly. We're just applying a small amount to see for the colour mix. And we're just, and it's obviously not sealed over. So we just wanted to make sure that we've got a small amount on there, just sufficient so that we can tell for our colour mix that it's okay, so that we can proceed. So give it a quick dry. So it's giving it a quick dry again. So we're not going to need the leather cleaner. We, you know, we were just using the um, LRC1 leather cleaner on there to do that. So we're not going to need that anymore. So next stage is obviously is pulling up, is getting these um, pucks here to stand up in the air. So you have to just bear with us, guys, because this is a um, it's not an easy video to make because we've got to try to get zoomed in as far as we can so that you can get clear details of what we're doing here to understand the job. So just bear with me. So hopefully you can see that now. So we've obviously got, um, I've got a tooth, a couple of toothpicks and I've got like a little needle and obviously I've got my colour and I've got a small sponge that I'm going to be using as well. So this is obviously the toothpicks and this is the needle. The needle is designed to sort of run through the grain so that you can get that done. So first of all, we need to get all of these so that they're pulled up so that we can get, you know, get the paint underneath them. Because what we want to do is we want to make this disappear. So let's have a look. So first of all, we're going to get some paint on a toothpick, like so. And we're going to try to get this underneath these areas. Yep, just like so. We're going to get it underneath it. Don't worry about what you see going around the outside there at the moment. This is going to be all come clear once you see exactly what we're doing. Because what we're going to do is just get it underneath it. I'll try to lift that up to get that underneath there. Push it underneath. Put the paint pushed underneath there. And the paint is going to help act as your glue. And it's going to help act as your actual filler as well. A lot of people when they're doing repairs, they get it wrong and they try to be clever with the repair and try to over explain it and make a process that is very, very simple, which is why we've always said for years, it's as easy as one, two, three. Prep it, colour it, seal it and the job is done. So let's have a look, see how we're doing with those so far. So, so far, they're looking pretty amazing. So th that's not a bad uh, result at the moment. So we've got to get these pushed down into position. You can use your fingertips to do that as well. Just keep pressing them into position and you know you can roll over as well. You just got to make sure that you're getting them pressed nicely into position so that they're held down nicely with the paint and then once we've got that done we can then start to deal with the next stages so when you look little loose fibers that you see just try to get those away and what we're going to do next is we've got to try to obviously build the paint up next to act as like a bit of a filler so now we've got those glued down we can just give that a very quick dry with the hairdryer let's just zoom back out there again so i can get in there with the hairdryer because we're quite close to it zoom back in again so now we're at this stage we can now start to get some more paint on here and we're going to get that literally in like so because 
then we're going to start to get that between the grain, which is what we need to do next. So we need to get a little bit of a sponge again. Just dab it with the sponge around the edges of the item that we're, you know, the damage that we're working on. The key to the success of uh, scratch repair is try not to get the repair to grow. And then while this is still wet, you can use the needle or the toothpick. And what we're going to try to do is to run the needle through like so, because what we're trying to create is the, is to disguise these scratches and then slowly build that color up. So we've got the color built up slowly. You can see there where we're sort of like putting scratches into it. So let's just give that a quick dry again. So this time I'm going to get a little bit of colour on my tip of my finger and we're going to just dab the colour in to the area with my finger like so. This is what you are going to be doing. If you're doing like sort of smart repairs or trying to get rid of scratches and things on you know, car seats or even furniture at home or whatever it is that you're working on, this is the good way around doing it. Because this way you're going to be able to make them disappear. So let's just give that a quick dry again. And you can see now it's looking really good. I mean, as you can see, the products dry very quickly as well. So, but we're, we're not too bad on there now. So we've got a little bit more work to do. Got to bear in mind here with this camera, we are really microscopically close up. The purpose of what you're doing is to do a repair and then we've got to try to fill in where we've got like little indentations in the color itself. So where we've got like a little bit of a fault where the tear was, you've, you've got like a little, almost like a little bit of an indentation. So what we need to do with those is to use the paint to fill those up so wherever they are you need to use the paint to sort of act as your filler to disguise those and that's what we're doing now we're just using that paint as the filler to disguise them let's give that a quick dry again sometimes while we're drying we might use the needle um, and run the needle through the repair so that it sort of like forms like a, a repair, you know, like a, it pushes the paint into the grain is what we're trying to do. I'm just wetting my finger at the moment just to rub that over the surface to help brush that into position to help hide all these imperfections up. And that isn't looking too bad. We've got one or two little sort of marks just here, but these are very close up. So we need to just try to get into those a little bit better than what we have. And that's all we need to do. So we need to try to get it to almost go like the other way. So just give it a little bit more sponge coat to get that paint on there and then we can sort of see where we're at with what we're doing I'm just trying to clean off the needle give the needle a bit of a clean off so we've got a couple of little indentations in there but it's not too bad certainly um, better than trying to sound the full area remove and fill which obviously you know there's nothing wrong with filling leather but what we're trying to achieve is to get something as realistic as possible here and somebody doing this at home this is one way that they can do this without having to have stacks of equipment to enable you to do this you can do this with little bits of equipment 
So what we're trying to do now is we're just trying to build up a little bit of paint to act as like a filler at the moment. And that's what we're trying to achieve is the paint is becoming the filler. So just very lightly dab that over and I can see where we're up to with that. I can just see I've got one or two little more bits to, to put a bit of paint in there. But I don't think we're far off. It's very hard to see this because even I'm losing where the actual repair was. It's not an easy one to see. Let's have a look, see what that's like. Now I'll dry that over with the hairdryer. looking pretty good. A couple of little wet areas there and a couple of tiny little marks but apart from that it's not too bad really to be fair. Just bring it back in shot. A couple of little areas that we need to try to perfect on this to make this perfect. Just need to try to fill them up with the paint. Use your toothpick to run through to create the actual grain on the surface. The toothpick is just running into the grain itself. Like so. And then we can go over and sponge in another bit of an area. Just to make sure this is blended off beautifully and you can't see the repair that's been carried out. And that's the purpose of what we're doing, you know, as technicians, is making sure that this repair is blended off beautifully so that it can't be seen. And that's the whole idea of what we do here is to try to bring you tips and tricks of how to do this without having to have stacks of equipment to do this. But I don't think that's looking too bad. Let's give it a dry. And that is how you repair a scratch, which I don't think is too bad now. We're just using the four colours. We've got the white there, umber, yellow oxide and the red oxide. And that's our mix. And as you can see, it really is looking quite spectacular. So that is exactly how you would do that to give that a repair on that leather item. If you have any questions at all, about any item you're trying to restore or repair, please don't hesitate to come through to our website and have a look. We're there to help you. And that is how you fix a scratch and make it invisible. Any questions you have or any help or tips that you need, head on over to the website, leatherrepaircompany.com. We are there to help you. Thank you very much, guys.